Can you imagine building a complete app from the user interface to the database implementation without writing a single line of code? Well, that's exactly what I did with Windsurf. You might know it as an AI-powered extension for VS Code, similar to GitHub Copilot, but now it's evolved into a full-fledged next-gen code editor. But here's the big question. How does it stack up against Cursor, the AI IDE everyone's talking about? Stick around to find out. Welcome to AI Labs. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out and ensures you won't miss any of the cool tools and tips we've got coming your way. So, heading over to the website, let's explore the features they offer, and I'll also link the website in the description below. I highly recommend watching this video, as it provides a detailed breakdown of everything they've implemented, with specific insights into every feature. Now let's talk about their new feature called Flows. What it does is combine agents and co-pilots. Agents are fully independent, while co-pilots work alongside you. Flows merges these concepts. As shown in the diagram, when you give a prompt, it first generates a plan and then works through each step. If you tell it to continue what it was doing, it keeps track of the context, just like an agent would. After that, it continues with the task and you can review it as it progresses. Starting with a simple prompt, it understands your context. Once it knows that, if you tell it to continue what it was doing, it does so using the context from before. They've also introduced a competitor to Cursor Composer called Cascade. Cascade offers full contextual awareness, just like Cursor Composer, and provides similar features. We'll test it out in the demos that we'll show you in this video. Other features they offer include standard tools like inline commands, code lenses, and autocomplete. They also automatically populate your commands into the terminal. While these features are common, the new Flows feature is the standout, and it's really exciting. As with Cursor, they offer a two-week trial of Windsurf Pro. If you like it, you can continue using the Windsurf Editor. Before we start testing it, let's take a look at the pricing. When we compare it to Cursor, the Pro plan here is half the price of Cursor's, which costs around $20. As you can see, Cursor's free trial offers only 200 completions and 50 slow premium requests. Even the Pro plan limits you to 500 fast premium requests. In contrast, Windsurf's free plan offers much more such as unlimited autocomplete sessions and AI editor chats. Even without using Cascade, the free plan gives you a lot of value. In the Pro plan, you get unlimited access to the Claude and GPT-4 models, while Cursor's AI only gives you 500 requests. All right, so if you've downloaded and set up the app, you'll be greeted with this. Here, Cascade gives you the option of starting an example project within Cascade, which is their parallel tool to Cursor Composer. We have multiple options here. Let's try the first one, which is to make a playable 2048 app with smooth animations. It will start by creating a new folder. Then by using the Control plus L command, we can open Cascade and it will begin generating our code. I'm just going to speed this up so you can see the code it generates. It has also given us instructions on how to start the game. So we'll just go ahead and open it up. All right, so we have opened the 2048 game in our browser, and you can see it has a very minimal interface and is working as expected. By using the arrow keys, we can move the tiles on the board. Now, what I want to do is experiment by changing the colors of the game to green and yellow to make it look a bit more interesting. So we'll go back into Cascade, provide the prompt, and speed this up as well. Another thing to note is the button labeled Open Diff. If you press this, it will open the code file it has changed and show the edits that have been made, similar to what Cursor Composer does. However, what Cursor Composer does better is that it shows you the changes it's making in real time as it writes the code. That's something I like a little better about Cursor. And the changes are done, so let's go ahead and view them. So, as we can see, it has correctly applied the color changes we requested, and it looks very nice and minimal. Now let's move on to another example. Okay, so we're back in the editor and we'll open the Cascade sidebar. This time, let's tell it to build Splitwise. Just like before, it opens another folder and by accessing the Cascade bar, it begins building the project. It's building Splitwise and the interesting thing is that in many other editors, if you told it to build or simply gave the name of a popular app, it wouldn't correctly start or clone it. But here, it has clearly started building the app. It's possible they've provided pre-built instructions for creating Splitwise, 
but let's speed up the video so you can see how it generates the code. Another thing to note is that it automatically starts fixing errors and finds alternative ways if it encounters any issues. Now it's asking me to proceed with the HTML templates, so we'll go ahead and do that. Here it's showing us the templates it has designed with Bootstrap 5, and now it's asking for other features we can implement. We'll just tell it to implement all of them. As you can see, it's also implementing the database, which is really cool. I haven't seen that before, where, with a single prompt, it implements the entire database as well. All right, so I'll ask how to start the app, and it begins by checking if the app configuration is correct. It gives me the command to run the app, so I'll go ahead and run it to see how it looks. However, we're seeing a not found error, so we'll go back into the app and ask it to fix it. I'm asking if it has created the front end and to troubleshoot if everything is okay. It has identified that it needs to create some front end templates, so it starts working on that. However, once again, it didn't work. So now I'll just paste the error directly in Cascade. And it correctly identifies that the error is related to routing. We'll go ahead and fix that, then run it again, and it has successfully set up the app. All right, so now that it's built, let's see what it has implemented. It's created a nice cover page, a hero section, and highlighted some features. Let's sign up. I'll just make a random username, email, and password, and then log in. Here we have our dashboard. Let's try adding an expense. But I think we need to create a group first, so let's do that. Okay, it opens a new tab for group expenses, and we can also add a member using their email. However, I noticed that it hasn't implemented a way to navigate back and forth. I'll have to use the browser for that, so that's an area that could be improved. Now let's add a new expense, and it's successfully added. If we go into the group expenses section, we can see that it shows all the group expenses together. So, we saw how Windsurf used flows to build applications, starting with a clear understanding that it needed to create a splitwise clone. From there, its AI agentic behavior kicked in, automatically suggesting all the components of a full stack app, including the front end and database integration, something I've never seen before. In conclusion, after exploring the features and capabilities of Windsurf, it's clear that this AI powered code editor offers a strong alternative to Cursor with its unique tools like Cascade and Flows. If you're looking for a more efficient, cost effective coding experience, Windsurf might be the right fit for you. The next step is to try it out yourself. Start with the free plan to explore its features and see how it can streamline your coding workflow. Make sure to check out the links in the description for more info and resources to get started. Well, that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep exploring.